I am Matt Shoemaker from the Live American History blog, and this is OER Week Day 1. Throughout OER Week, I will be sharing resources that I have used in my classroom this year. They have been fun to make, they've been engaging for students, and I have really seen an increase in critical thinking since we started the year. So I hope that you will follow along this entire week because I'm going to be sharing things out free for you all to take and use and remix and make it your own because I'm a big supporter in the Go Open movement and I want to share those things with you. So you can follow along at the blog liveamericanhistory.blogspot.com and you can connect with me on Twitter. You can find me at the shoe underscore CMS. This is my ninth year in education. Sorry, had to let that sink in a minute. Nine years. I've taught middle school, high school, and I've worked at an adjunct for several years as well. I've seen a wide range of student abilities and interests, and I've seen a wide variety of coverage. So with my middle school classes right now, I cover American history from the pre-Columbian period through Washington's first presidency. And I'll let you in on a little secret. Not all history content is exciting. I have struggled throughout the years to make my content engaging, to make it interesting for students, because we do not learn if we are bored. My goal for them at the end of the year is not memorization, because Google. My goal is for them to do the work of historians, to be able to take a historical topic, to dig deeply into it, to find claims and test those claims uh, against other sources. I want them to corroborate. I want them to close read. I want them to be able to find context and I want them to be able to source because these are not just historical skills. These are skills that help them decipher fake news. These are skills that they can take into other disciplines as they move into high school, as they move into college, and as they live their lives. Now, I know that sounds like a lofty goal, but I do honestly believe that that is our contribution to the students' education, to be able to teach them to decipher all of this massive information that is coming at them from every direction, from every outlet, and to make sense of it. That is something that we as a discipline are uniquely suited to do. I believe one of the best ways to train students to actually do history and to be historians is to use primary sources. And I'm encouraged to see more and more primary sources in the classroom, uh, anthologies of primary sources being released, uh, places like Gilder Lehrman sending out to affiliate schools, uh, resource booklets of primary sources around certain topics. And, you know, this is a big change from when I went through middle school and high school, the only primary source that I ever remember seeing was the preamble to the Constitution that we had to memorize in eighth grade. And when I started teaching, I made it my mission to use primary sources and every unit, every week, and sometimes every day in a week, we will look at primary source material. So let's say you're on board with primary sources and you really want to use them in your classroom to further this work of making students historians. How do you do that? How do you explain 17th century language to a 7th grade student? Well, I can tell you it's possible and it takes work. So at the beginning of the year, I start off with the Shegg Reading Like a Historian curriculum from the Stanford History Education Group. A couple years ago, in my Twitter feed, someone had tweeted out this lesson on Pocahontas, and I looked into it because at that time we were about to start our coverage of Jamestown, and what I found was a lesson that utilized primary source material, and it utilized things that I love. Um, students close reading a text, 
students corroborating with other documents and making their own decision on what they felt about a historical topic and then forcing them to provide evidence to back up that opinion. And that is what is so great about the curriculum put out by the Stanford History Education Group is that every single thing on their site that I have ever looked at has those basic components. The Shade curriculum is really easy to find and use. If you go to Google and search for Shade, it will bring up the Stanford History Education Group. And what we are looking for is reading like a historian. So once you click on that, you'll see on the left hand bar here, there are intro materials and then lessons for US and world history. Now this site has a wealth of other information that I've included links to in day one resources. But for our purposes, we're looking at the intro materials. So if we click on that, we can see a list of resources or lesson plans available to us. I always start with the lunchroom fight, end with lunchroom fight two, and I skip the snapshot autobiography in the middle. So if I click on lunchroom fight, you can see an example of what we have. You have two options. You can either download, so you have to create a username and password, which just takes a couple minutes, or you can do the quick view just to get an idea of the resource and whether it's something you want or not. As you can see, it has the materials that are included and that you'll need. It has common core alignment and it has a complete plan of instruction. And at the bottom, we see the necessary materials or handouts for students. And they also have PowerPoints that are included in here, uh, as well as teacher materials that would help you do that. So if we go back to intro materials. We can see a set of classroom posters that are again free and downloadable in both English and in Spanish for bilingual classrooms. And there are questions that students should ask and it's a good reminder for them and for us as teachers to always be using these four major components of sourcing, close reading, context, and corroboration. To give you an idea of how I use the Shade curriculum to kick off my year-long push for turning students into historians, uh, I should take you in the first couple weeks of my class. We start off the first couple days with some makerspace type activities to have students get to know each other and so that I can see, more importantly, group dynamics which students are going to accept challenges and run with it, which students are going to need a little more prodding to get them to that point. And then once everybody starts to feel comfortable with each other, we move into the first lesson that is on the introductory unit by the Stanford History Education Group, and it's called the Lunchroom Fight. So the students come in about the third or fourth day of school, and I tell them that there has been a massive fight during one of the other lunch shifts, and we have to investigate exactly what happened because the principal needs their help in coming up with a clear picture because she was not there at the time to see what happened. So we start talking about the different people that could be involved, different types of people that could be involved. We talk about different types of people that could have seen this happen. And then we take a field trip down to the cafeteria where we look at all angles and we talk about what security cameras might have seen, who could have been passing by, what angles would have caused somebody to see the event differently than someone else. When we come back to the classroom then, um, I put some sources out in front of them. I break it to them that this is not actually a real event that happened at our school, and they're very upset about that. But uh, it's hooked them, so I've already got them, and we're already pushing ahead. So they look at the sources that they are given, and then we work through the other lessons that the Shade curriculum has built on that foundation of the lunchroom fight. 
And one thing that I really like about the whole Shag curriculum is that they have this overarching framework of four big components. They have sourcing, where students learn to identify where something came from and test its validity based on that or make an assumption on its validity based on that. Um, context, where they figure out what else was happening at the time. Corroboration, do other accounts of the event support this? And close reading, we have to investigate into what people say, but also how people say it and what things people choose not to say. Uh, can sometimes be as important as what they actually do put down. Now, I don't follow the pacing guide exactly for the any of the Shag lessons, so my entire journey through the lunchroom fight from beginning to end takes about four days, and there is one activity that I leave out, not because it's a bad activity, but just because it doesn't fit for me in my classroom, anything else that I do throughout the year. And then we spend a week investigating primary sources. So I have loved that Shig has given me the opportunity to build a foundation that these kids can study primary sources on. And I hope that you will give it a try in your classroom and I hope that it will benefit you as well. Well, join me tomorrow for day two where I will talk about one of my new favorite educational tools to use, and those are HyperDocs. They're fun to make, they are engaging for the students, and you shoot from the bottom to the top of Bloom's Taxonomy in just one lesson. All right, thanks for watching, and please remember to check out the blog at Live American History blogspot.com and let's connect on Twitter. You can find me at the shoe underscore CMS.